Hello guys, in this video we will see how to create or set up AWS RDS for MS SQL Server 2022. Then we will see how to connect it from the SQL Server Management Studio. Connect to AWS Console, then click on Services, then click on Database, then click on Aurora and RDS or just click on the search box and search for RDS. See here we have the Aurora and RDS service. Click on it. Then click on DB instances. See, I don't have any instance, so click on create database. Then first select the database creation method standard or easy create. I'm going with standard. Then select the database engine. See, here we have the Microsoft SQL Server. Select it. See, once we select it, we have the options like database management type, Amazon RDS or Amazon RDS custom. I'm going with Amazon RDS and select the SQL Server edition. See here we have the Express Web and Web Standard and Enterprise Edition. So based on your requirement, is you can select. I'm going with Standard and see here license is included. Now select the engine version. I'm going to set up the latest one that is SQL Server 2022. Select it. See here next templates. We have the production dev test. So I'm going with the dev test. So these are based on your environment. Now we have to provide the name for this AWS RDS for MS SQL Server. Next credential settings. See this is a master username or if you want to provide some other you can provide it. Like SA or anything. Okay. But it must satisfy this condition. Then credential management. I want to self manage it. So select it or if you want manage it in AWS secret manager you have to select this one this is the most secure option it is up to you then generate the password auto generate password or provide manually see it must satisfy this condition okay remember that remember this master username and password then scroll down Next instance configuration. Based on instance configuration, also cost will be changed. So I am going with burstable. I am going with standard. This has minimal. Okay. So you can select these options based on a requirement. Then storage allocation. I am going with SSD 20 gigabytes. It is up to you. You can select up to this much. Okay. Then additional storage configuration. You want to enable auto storage scaling. Select this one and provide the maximum threshold. Okay, I don't want, but in production you must select this one. Okay, next availability and durability. If you want mirroring or always on, you have to keep the checkbox. I don't want for this demo purpose. Connectivity. I'm going with computer resource as don't connect to any EC2 computer resource network type IPv4 then virtual private network I don't have anything in this region so that's why it is saying create new VPC subnets then public access select S and also DB subnet group it is it will create the new DB subnet group then VPC security group that is firewall choose the existing one so we have the default one availability zone select any one of these from this list rds proxy i don't want to create security other certificate other also i don't want then national configuration see the default port for the ms sql service and next microsoft windows authentication if you want to enable you have to select the checkbox then you have to fill all these details okay at this moment i don't want then tax if you want to provide you can provide tax then see here we have the monitoring options standard and database advanced it is up to you okay next additional monitoring settings see if you want to enable enhanced monitoring you have to select the checkbox okay then you can select this os metric granularity monitoring role for os metrics then agent locker error locks if you want to export you can so you can select the check boxes then additional configuration that is db options 
I am going with all defaults. Then backup section. Next backup retention policy. We can select up to 35 days. If you want to backup window configuration, select the choose window. I don't want copy tax. Snapshot. If you want to copy the tax to snapshot, you have to select the checkbox. Then next, AWS KMS keys. I don't want anything. I want remaining. I want to go with the defaults. See here, the cost of the estimated monthly cost is 715 USD. Why? Because here I have selected edition as standard. But if you go like express edition, then if you go to the bottom. For the estimated cost, see cost is only 16 USD. Okay, based on the version, cost will be there. Okay, so based on your requirement, you have to select. If you select enterprise edition, then also cost will be more. See, it is almost three times to standard. So, based on your requirement, you have to select this edition. So, I am going with standard. If you are okay with all these settings. Then click on create database. Close this one. See, instance is creating. Wait until this status to be available. If you want to see the credentials, click on view credentials. See here, we have the master username, admin, and this is the password. If you want to check the password, just click on this copy button. Okay. In meantime, open SQL Server Management Studio. If you want to install SQL Server Management Studio on your machine, then search for my YouTube channel. How to install SQL Server Management Studio on Windows or search for this video description how to install SQL Server Management Studio. See here I have already installed SQL Server Management Studio 20. Click on it. See server type in database engine. Then here we have to provide the endpoint that we will get here. If we click on here, see here it will populate the endpoint. Wait until this information populates. It will be populated once the status change from this creating to available or configure. See here in connectivity and security we have the options networking, security information, network type etc. Okay and security group roles, replication status, this is the replication instance name. Okay. See successfully created database. Now copy this endpoint and also see the status it is available. Click on this copy button. Now go to SQL Server Management Studio, paste it, then select SQL Server Authentication, then provide the master username, admin, then provide the password that we have given. Then click on connect. This will throw error. I will show you the error and resolution. See, we are unable to connect. Okay. So this is the expected error. Go to instance, then click on this VPC that is security group then click on security group ID then click on edit inbound rules then click on add rule then select the MSSQL then select the source like my IP or IP range so I am going with my IP, then click on save rules. See successfully saved. Now go back here, then click on connect. This time we will be able to connect. See, we are able to connect. See, we have successfully connected. Expand databases. Wait a moment, it is expanding. So, see, these are the databases. You can also connect by using dbver. Open dbver. If you want to install dbr on your machine, search for my YouTube channel how to install dbr on Windows or Linux operating systems. Now click on this plus button, then select SQL Server, then click on next. Here we have in place of host, we have to give the endpoint that we have copied from here. Okay, so paste it and database name is provide any existing database name. And select the authentication SQL server, then provide the master username, then provide the master user password. Then you have to click on text connection. This is the way. Click on it. See successfully connected. Click on OK. Click on finish. Expand this connection name. Let me create a database. Right click new database. 
just for testing purpose i am creating a database expand databases see here we have only these databases let me create see it is taking time okay now provide database name then click on okay see we have successfully created see we have the database even if you right click databases and refresh in the db we will get that new database name see here okay and if you want to verify the version of the sql server just click on click on this new query then run select at the rate version select the query and click on execute see you have successfully connected to ms sql server 22 so we have successfully connected to aws rds for ms sql server 2022 now go to aws rds see here we have the options like actions if you want to stop temporarily click on stop temporarily if you want to reboot click on reboot if you want to delete permanently click on delete so i strongly recommend if you are not using delete it or stop temporarily okay because charges are based on the uses okay so again i strongly recommend if you are not using delete it okay so in this video we have seen how to create aws rds for ms sql server 2022 then we have seen how to connect aws rds for ms sql server from SQL Server Management Studio that is SSMS and DBWR. Okay, for more AWS or RDS tutorials, please subscribe my channel. Thank you.